Hello, welcome along to this session here. I'm going to be talking about scoping requirements which we might have for a tenant to tenant migration. There's often times where we're taking data from a source tenant and they want to give us access to maybe let's say we're doing say 100 users out of there and the tenant has 1000 users in there. They want to give us the rights to just the 100 to move them rather than giving us full access to migrate anybody in the tenant. So what I'm going to show you here is how we would uh, set that up inside the uh, the tenant and and how we apply that into the migration Wiz console as well. So as I refer to the help desk article that talks about setting up the permissions in the console at the start, you can see if I actually scroll down right to the bottom of this one, this is where we've previously set up all the application registration and the like. And I'll just go right down the bottom here. We go past all this setup, which is all good. But you'll notice right at the bottom, it talks about the scoping requirements here. And this is the article we want to be looking at. So let's just go into that one. And there's some changes we need to make in that application registration that we just did. And one of them is actually to remove the full access to Zap permissions. We're not going to be using that. So we need to take that out. So I'm looking at the enterprise applications in that uh, tenant we're using for this quick demo. And we click on the migration wheels, October 2024. That's the one I set up previously. And what we need here is firstly, I will grab the application ID and the object ID here and put those into Notepad. We will need those a little bit later on. So let's grab both of those. You can see I'm just storing those inside here just for later, as I mentioned. Okay, drop that away. But what we need to do is go into these uh, the application permissions here. On the left, and we need to take out this full access as app. So I'm just going to go here and revoke that permission. And you can see that's now gone. So the next stage is then to take a mail enabled security group, which we will then put all the users in that we do want to have the uh, the application being able to see. And then we need to run some PowerShell. So First of all, we do need to create the uh, the group itself. And I'm going to show you how to obtain this, this uh, distinguished name from there and what PowerShell commands we might need to do that. So in the admin center here, we go across to active teams and groups, have a look at security there, and we're going to add a mail enabled security group, which we'll give it a name. I'm just going to call it migration with scoping group. Hit next, it will need an owner. I normally just put in the uh, service account for MigWiz there, which we've used throughout the project. Add that in, hit next. It'll ask us for a couple of members. I'm going to add two people in there just so we can do something with it, but I'll add the bobs. Hit that, and next. Now, the email it's asking for, uh, we're never going to use it, so it can be anything that you like. I normally just address it the same way and just leave it on the on Microsoft.com domain as well. Hit next there, and of course it just goes through and creates that group nice and easily for us. There we go. Now we do need to get that distinguished name from the, the group, and we're going to do that with PowerShell. I'm going to start a PowerShell 7 window here, and starting that with admin rights, as you can see. And we need to connect to Exchange Online, so if I put in connect there, that will take us into another browser session. We'll use that uh, admin at Cozy Mouse, which is already logged in. You can see that's done. There we go. So back to PowerShell here. We are now connected. Now, if we don't have too many groups in there, we can quite easily just do a, a get distribution group and that will show us what they look like. Uh, in this case, we haven't. We can see quite clearly we have this group. Now, what I'm going to do here is just grab that name. That is quite important because to get the distinguished name for it. Now, what you might want to do as well, a little tri uh, tip here make it a bit wider because if your DN is longer than what's displayed, you won't see it. You'll see the dots afterwards. But here I'm going to be doing get distribution group and the identity is going to be what we've just pasted in there, this guy. And the property I'm after is just the distinguished name like that. And it's this guy that we need to now grab. And I'm going to throw that, as you can see here, into Notepad for the use later. Now, looking back at our help desk article now, you can see here is the list of commands that need to be run. So what I'm going to do, just to make it uh, 
a bit easier for us. We'll grab all of that out of the article, like so. And we're going to just drop that one away there. And back to our notepad, I'm going to drop this in here. Now, what I like to do here is just to, to build this script from what we have up here. So the application ID we're going to be replacing with this guy. So we'll do, oh, oops, excuse me, like that. And the object ID, we'll do the same. Place that in here. And we'll give the management scope. We'll call it user mailboxes is fine. But we also need to take the distinguished name here. Oh, let's grab that last one. There we go. And place that over the top of what was in the script, which is this guy. Remember to keep those uh, tracks in there. So we've got that completely as it should be. And now we're ready to actually run these commands. So I'm going to move this one up the top make it a bit easier to see both of these items and we'll run these first so we'll grab those three put those in there set that up and now the new management scope grab the whole thing paste it in here and enter that and you can see quite quickly it's come back and says yep new management scope is created which is good and our next command here it will create that service principle put that one in down there and the last one is we'll assign that management role assignment into that scope name and there we go and I'll show you two other things here firstly I want to see um, if this is really taken effect so let's see if we uh, do a, a test of the service principal author authorization on a user which we put in there which is the Bob Jones account which we added into that uh, security group earlier and we'll also do one that isn't and let's see what it comes back with so how we do that is quite simply with the we do test and if we put in start typing service principal and just tab forward you can see that's the command so the identity which we're interested in is the one we used up the top here for the service name, which was migration Wiz, And we tested against the resource, which is going to be Bob Jones at cozymouse.com. When that comes back, you can see, yes, it's looking at the, the role name that's got access to it. And you can see that in scope says true. So let's run the same command and let's give it to a user that is not in that security group, which I know say Aspen Harris here. And there she's come back as being in scope false. So you can see that is now definitely working. It's picking up that security group and we are good to proceed with the migration. Now, later on, when you uh, want to do a cleanup on this, we do suggest that you go and remove the, uh, the service principle and the rights there. If we look at the help desk article, you can see here, this is what we will be doing. Uh, taking them out. I'm not going to take them out now. We're going to be using them. But these are the three commands to uh, remove them safely at the end of your migration, which is obviously best practice to do so. So thank you for watching. I do hope that was useful in setting up a scoped migration uh, for the migration with uh, project setup. So uh, thank you once again.